Hi, this is Romilly with Golden Circle Designs. Last week we went easy with the with the um, arrow stitch. This week we're going to get a little bit more complicated. We're moving back into knot stitches. And this one I can't believe I actually I haven't actually videotaped it earlier. This is the bullion knot and it creates beautiful long uh, long knots. It's worked the similar way to the French knot but it's, it makes great ringlets for little girl's hair. It makes great manes for lions. It's a long, um, it's a long coiling knot that looks much like a caterpillar on its own. So what we're going to do, it's one that does require both hands, and I'll do it both left-handed and right-handed as usual, but the you'll want to, like French knots, you'll want to prop your frame up on a table so you can use both hands and, you know, attach it to your, hook, hook, balance it on your, between your stomach and the table or, or use a weight to hold it up or use a frame. But you will want to use two hands to do this one. It's a really cool stitch. It is one of the more complicated stitches for getting texture together. If you're using a finer thread, I highly recommend using a milliner's needle, which the needle eye is the same size as the needle part, so there's no flare where you put the th thread through at the eye, which makes it easier to maintain tension. I'm going to be using larger thread, and therefore I'm going to be using the chenille needle that I have been using. But if you can do it with a milliner's needle, which is also called a straw needle, I highly recommend that. So with the right hand, we're going to, I'm going to work this on a diagonal because it's a little easier for me. And we're going to pull, bring it up at one end of the, of the knot. Now we're going to put it back down at the other end of the knot. So the knot is going to be that long. And we're going to sew it so that it comes back up that first hole. This is where it gets tricky. You're going to want to push it so that the needle is, push it from the bottom of the fabric so the needle is kind of up. And then you're going to wrap the needle. Two, three, four, five, six. Is that about the same length? Probably two more. Seven, eight. Wraps can be as many as you want. In this case, I'm doing eight. Again, we're pulling it it's wrapped around the needle. We're going to hold the wraps so that the tension stays relatively good. And because there's an eye on the needle, it's a little bit harder. So we'll loosen the tension up a little bit and pull it through. We're still holding that knot so it stays in one place. And then we can pull it to the side and continue to pull it through and that makes the bullion knot. You may need to stroke it a little bit to keep the coils in one line. I may have gone one coil too many for that distance. And then the thread goes back down the same hole that it, that it um, came up. So you've got a coil of a long line of coils. Like French knots, if you mess up, these have to be cut out. And usually you'll have to cut most of them out. So we're going to go up. Now we'll go down at a diagonal again, coming back up where we were. Now I wrap, I wrap from the hand that's holding the thread to the back first. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and since the other one was too long, seven. I'm going to loosen that, that a little bit because of the eye of the needle. You don't have to play with the loose, loosening the tension as much if you've got a Milner's needle. That's why the normal embroidery needles are a little more touchy. So we're going to keep the coils lined up as we pull that through. Stroke them a little bit. As I said, this is tricky. It takes a lot of practice, so I highly recommend a doodle cloth that you don't care about. Just stitch lots of them. And keep practicing. And they can go vertically. So in this case, we'd go from top to bottom. One, two. I don't like this angle. 
I'm not sure why I chose it. We'll take a little, pull that through. Let's go the other way. So I'm going to go vertically. It's always easier to work up so that the needle is at the top. One, two, three, four, five, probably six. Since we don't have the extra length for the diagonal, pull it through. I'm still kind of holding that tension. And back down. Now if you put more, I'll go horizontally this time. Now if I take a little tiny stitch and then I put six, three, four, five, six, or seven, or eight coils on that needle, those coils are longer than this, this stitch. So as I pull that through, it will still knot the same way, but when you go back down, you'll see that the knot stands out from the thread. So that makes nice little inchworms that actually stick up on the fabric. It can give you more texture. You can even go really small, really teeny tiny, with a lot of coils. Four, five, six, eight. Like eight in this case. And we're going to hold. Yeah, loosen it so that it goes through the eye. Hold it, pull it. Make sure that end comes through. Make sure those are all even. And then it goes down there. And now you've got a mess. <laughs> um, right, basically, you've got the other than this, which is my tension issue because of the eye of the needle. But you've got a bullion knot that stands out like a pico. So that's a very high stitch. Let's do the normal one one more time. Coming up there. And we'll go down at a diagonal. And coming back up. And go seven, one, two, oops, three, four, five, six, seven. Again, I've got an eye that requires the thread to be relatively loose to pull through. Now we're going to pull it. Sometimes it will look like it's not coming, but will it will smooth out and look good. You really need, as I said, you really need to play with these. But that's the bullion knot. Have fun, play with it, see what you can think about to do with it. Um, it's a really versatile knot. It's highly used a lot in um, Brazilian embroidery with the high slippery, really slippery rayon threads. But I like to use it in cruel wool for lion's manes and in embroidery thread for hedgehogs and spikes and little ringlets for girls' hair. It's just a lot of fun, and we'll come back with the left hand in just a moment. Thanks. Hi, we're back with the left-handed bullion knot. As I said earlier, it uses both hands, but if you've, your left hand is your dominant hand, this angle will be easier for you, most likely. I work from top to bottom diagonally, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my thread back up here, and now I'm going to take a stitch, and in this case I'm going to take a diagonal stitch across the bar, the, um, the band, and I'm going to bring the stitch back up through the hole that I left, that I went down on. In this case, I seem to have split the thread. That's not necessarily a bad thing. So when I'm here, I'm going to take my right hand, and I'm going to hold the, thread, the needle up, and I'm going to go around it. You can go around, wrap it either direction. When I'm working right-handed, I tend to work clockwise, so I should theoretically from the back to the front. So theoretically left-handed, I should work that way, but clockwise is just easier for me. Two, three, 
four, you need at least four curls around it. For a length, this one, we decided it on, when, on the right hand it was seven, five, six, seven was the right length. Loosening the stitch a little bit, the wraps a little bit so that the eye will go through them. Pulling it out, holding. Make sure you're holding that knot so that the coils don't get all tied in knots. And then pulling that tight, but not super tight, not overly tight. You may need to smooth the coils a little bit as you go. And then it goes back down in the same hole. And there's your bullion knot. Now bullion knots can be stitched with a very short, well let's do one more normal one. So up and down and up and we're going to hold that needle with the right hand so that it's out of the way. Notice it's still coming out the back so that there's some stability in there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, that was actually one of them fell off, so seven. And we're going to loosen it a little bit because there's an eye. If you're using a milliner's needle, you don't have to loosen the tension because it will just smooth off. I'm pulling with the left hand, I'm smoothing the coils with my right hand in the needle. and then it goes back down in the hole to hold it. You can make really short let's see, you can make really short stitches with the same number of wraps and that will make not only a knot but it will make a loop out of your knot. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Gently release it Oops, a little bit because of the pulling with my right hand. So I've kind of made a mess there. Let's see if we can get that clean to clean up as we go by holding it. And then because that's going to be tighter, there's the line. Pull it a little bit tighter. Pull it down in that same hole, and then you'll have a loop, how it stands out. These can make interesting little eyes for hooks and eyes. They can make little, little earthworms or inchworms. You can even make it smaller and make the loop higher. So this is almost non-existent as far as that stabilizing stitch. So we're going to hold this with the right. And I stitch it, I do my wrapping with whichever hand is easier. Five, six, seven, eight. A little bit looser. Holding it there. Pulling it through. There's my straight. Pulling it really tight. Using the needle to make sure the tension's straight and there's an even higher loop. The tension on things like this is a little harder but you can get some really neat effects so you need to use both hands to make sure the tension works and there's your loop. I generally do the pulling and tugging with my dominant hand so if I'm stitching with my left hand you'll see me using my right hand to hold the loop while my left hand is underneath pulling the tight when I'm doing working with the left hand. So that is your bullion knot and it's a really fun knot. Go have fun with it and I'll see you next week. Thanks for joining me. Um, just before I leave, if you're interested in in this type of thing and you're enjoying it, my blog post, my the link to my blog is below, and there's actually ideas for using the stitches every week that I put on there. 
and also the um, projects that I'm working on, including new design projects which are available at my Etsy shop and new artwork as well. And I hope to see you there. We'll talk to you later. Bye.